Okay, I'm sharing with you some teaching that actually at the end, beginning of this year, we also talked about, but I really believe, standing at the end of this year and looking at what God has given you, please go and spend time with God, please bring this, this specific teaching before Him to evaluate, but also to ask Holy Spirit, show me how to go into next year for the next season of my life. So that the quality of my commitment to God, the yes, that there will be nothing cheap in how I say, yes, God, for what you have for me, here I am. No, let it be with excellence. Let it be with excellence. Amen. Go with me to Romans, Romans 12, please. Romans 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and I beg of you, in the view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive declaration in your bodies, dedication in your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. First, I start with to say, I appeal to you, therefore, and I beg of you. I appeal to you. It has something in it to say, I command you. I challenge you. And I want to say, take the challenge from God. Take the challenge from God with him commanding you, but also the encouragement to, to say, you can do this. You can do this. And because you can do it, that's why the appeal is being made. That's why you are challenged. Hello? Take the challenge because God believes you can do it. Let's say, God, God believes that I can do it. Make a decisive dedication of your bodies. Let's go with it. Present your bodies as a living, holy, and acceptable sacrifice before the Lord. A living sacrifice, I want to say, you know when you sacrifice, when you are the sacrifice, you will be dead. Hello, you will be dead. But in the sacrifice, there's life. Because you are the one sacrificing, but you are the sacrifice itself. And let the life of God be part of this whole sacrifice. And it's beautiful. When I, not just the day that I gave my life to Christ, but every day as a lifestyle, there is life in the process of giving myself. I sacrifice this Opinion that is very alive in me. Oh, this issue that is very alive in me. This immature reaction that is very alive in me. Hello? This justification that is very alive in me. I, I, I sacrifice that. I give my body. Present my body in a way that I will give that up. But because the life of God is in me. Because the life... Of God is in me. Not because religion. Not because of the performance. There's, there's death in that. And there's only death. It's dead. And in the sacrifice, there's no 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. But if it's that I give myself as a living sacrifice, life will come forth. Life will come forth. Because of the life, life of Christ, I give myself. In the world... The, Many guys, they will give themselves. Many guys, as Muslims, as in whatever faith they are in, they will give themselves, but there's death in the sacrifice. There's no life in the sacrifice. Hello? I can do it in performance. I can do it in my flesh. I can do it because of religion. I can do it because it is expected of me, but there's death in my sacrifice. And you will know it. When you serve, when you do things that you do, when you don't do it as if unto the Lord, hello, there's no life in it. But the problem is not then, first of all, what you do. The problem is how you do it. Are you doing it as if unto the Lord? If not, there's no living sacrifice. God is challenging you that even in next year, it will be a living sacrifice. Holy, 
a holy sacrifice unto the Lord. Holy has to do this about this uniqueness. Uniqueness unto the Lord and unto Him alone. You can choose to sacrifice your life in the name of your opinion, in the name of your business, in the name of I want to leave a legacy, I want to leave financial security for my children. But that's not holy unto the Lord. That's nothing holy unto the Lord. But holy unto the Lord is where I present my body in such a way that God can take my life and he can put it there. Wherever he wants to take my life, wherever he wants to put my life, I'm happy with that. Even many times I will not understand that, why he will put me in certain situations or certain places. Even though that, God, I want my life to be a holy sacrifice. I want it to be pure. I want to sacrifice because I love you, but with a life and a love that is pure. That is pure. Not I will have to do this because it's the right thing. No, I want to do this. And I see this as an honor. And God, you alone take my life. I don't want the hand of circumstances. I don't want the hand of opinion or performance or the hand of the hurt or the offenses to take my life and put it somewhere. There's nothing. There's nothing holy unto you in that. But I want to give my life there where you are putting my life where you are placing my life or where you are planting my, my life in a certain place to bear fruit. Not true? Don't, don't waste your life by bringing a sacrifice in death. Don't destroy your life, but deny. Deny and there will be life coming forth. Destroy and you will see destruction and death. That's all that you will see. Oh, man, you can see that. When you have an issue with somebody, the, the, the thing wearing you down, the thing, in, you can even see it in people's eyes. You've seen that before? When somebody, they have an issue with you, you can see it, man. It's like they're coming. You don't have a word for that in English. It's like, you know... You have this thing in your eyes that gives this message. Yeah, I have a problem with you. Or there's this thing that you fight in your heart. And that's poison. And God is not in it. Your problem is with God, not with that person. My God, set us free. Present your bodies as a sacrifice, living, holy, and acceptable. Acceptable, is to, it has to do with I do it because I love him. But in the way that God loves it. He wants, he loves it when you must just destroy everything. No. He loves it when you present yourself in such a way because you love him, because that's the way he did it to you. He gave himself everything because he loves you. And that was the quality of his reaching out to you. So there's a quality reaching out to him in how I present myself. In, in the quality of how I present myself, that is acceptable to him. When it's coming from a love that is pure, in a way that his life is involved in how I give myself, and where I say, it will be unto you and unto you alone. I will do this, but then he must do this. I will do that, but then this is the way. And if somebody don't greet you or somebody don't do it in the right way towards you, you will not give yourself. Man, that's some Christian walk with manipulation. No, let it not be so in Jesus' name. You give yourself because you love him. Amen? Ah, anybody? Amen? Next one. Change. Your mind, verse 2, where it says, Do not be conformed to the world of this age, fashioned after all and adapted to the external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, 
by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may. Let's leave that one there. Change your mind. Tell your neighbor, change your mind. And it's not, first of all, my brother, my sister, to change your opinion. Oh, you can change your opinion. Many times somebody realized, yes, this was wrong. That was right. Okay, I repent. I changed the opinion about how I saw things. Uh -uh. This changing of mind is not just to do with opinion. Changing your opinion can many times be a thing of in how I would have an issue with somebody. I change even a strategy. I will accept certain things by having a different opinion. Somebody can have an opinion that, yes, okay, I see that there is a God. And he changed his opinion from being an atheist to realize there is a God. Many people had a good opinion about Christ when he walked on earth. Man, they did nothing. Hello? There's an opinion that the devil has, <laughs> and he knows what's going to happen. He has a very accurate opinion <laughs> about actually what's going to happen. Are you with me? But that, that, didn't, that cannot bring him into a place of accuracy with Christ. So changing your opinion means nothing. The changing of mind is so that you can think the way he is thinking. Changing your mind so that you can think what he is thinking. Because the word says you have the mind of Christ. Where? In your? Anybody awake? Where? In your? In your heart, in your spirit, in your spirit, you have the mind of Christ. So you need to change this mind so that you will think the way he thinks. He's not just get a different opinion. The opinions of Christ when he walked here, though, they were very opinions. And a lot of that, at the end of the day, it was accurate. But this has to do with so much more. Don't conform to the world. Don't think the way the world is thinking about things. Don't have the mind of the world that can tr control you, control you in the way that it wants to. But be transformed, transformed. That has to do with where my mind can determine how my life will be going. Are you with me? But transformation is not changing opinion. Transformation is how can I say? Regrouping all my opinions. It's, it's changing the way that I will think. How my thoughts are put together. How my thoughts are being put together. When I experience this, then I think that. And that will bring that reaction in my life. Because when this happens, it means when Donay is not smiling at me, it means she's rejecting me. She has an issue. And we will have to sort it out. But first of all, I will just keep on a certain at a certain distance. And we will, until we will have a meeting. And then we will sort it out. And I believe God will help us because I believe the word says one, two, three, four, five. No, it's not supposed to be like that. From the beginning, I'm supposed to start to understand. God, what are you saying to me? What is your word about Dune? Hello. Are you with me? Be renewed. Be renewed. And that renewing, that transformation is a, is a lifestyle. I will think more and more the way he thinks. Every morning his mercies will be new. There will be freshness in my thought patterns. But you know when you have an issue, you will see more a shutdown in your relationships with people. And it will not just be a shutdown towards that person. You are irritated with that person and there's a shutdown in that. You will see it manifest in other relationships around you. You will say, it's that person. The enemy is laughing at you. Because you're making yourself a clown. Because you think it will stay with that person. It will not stay with that person. It will become the poison in your heart and it will manifest towards the people that you actually love the most do you want that poison in your heart towards the people that you love the most then stop with the issue of somebody else there or there or there 
be renewed, be renewed, be renewed in your mind, in your thinking, in how you are being put together. Reconstruct your mind. Reconstruct your thought patterns. Reconstruct the way that you will think when that happens, this will be the end result. Says who? Says who? Make sure if God says so, then okay. Five loaves of bread, two fish, this is the way it is finished. It wasn't this, this major sin to think it will not feed 5,000 people. It's not like this sin from hell that it's not going to feed 5,000 people. That transformation, the renewing of the mind, the freshness of what God can do. How fresh are you in your thinking about God that can do the impossible and that tomorrow he can surprise you in how he wants to do the impossible because he wants to brag about himself. He wants to have center stage. He wants you to wow about him. He wants you to think, to, to be beyond he, your own thinking. But will you allow it or will you control your life into the place where you understand him? And if you don't understand him in that area, you will not allow him. God's going to help us. Amen. Number three. So that what? All of this so that we will know and discover the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The will of God that is good. He created the earth. He created the heavens. He created all the things out there, and he created everything good. When you look at the sky, when you look at the stars, when you look at things out there, what he did was good. And you can do certain things that's very good. But to do the good will of God, you need to know the word because his word is very good. Amen? And in that, what is good, God is good. So when God is in the center of what you do, that's good. It must be like that. So when you know what you do is good, it's because God is in it. Hello? But if God is not in what you do, what you do is not his will. It's not the good will of God if God is not in it. So first of all, about his will, the foundation of his will is God must be in it. Then you are busy with the good will of God. When God is in it. Let's say when God is in it, it is the good will of God. Acceptable, acceptable will of God, it has more to do with relationship. In our relationship, I'm busy in my relationship with him and he wants me to do specific, certain specific things. So it's not just good because I know his word. I need to start with his word. I need to start with his word. But it's acceptable because God loves, God loves it, what you are doing. There's initiative between you and God. There's initiative between you and God. Hello? That's where your relationship is alive. That's where you can hear his voice clearly. Where you can hear his voice clearly. That's pushing into relationship. Not just, I want an answer about this and I want an answer. And I'm seeking his face for the answer. No, I'm seeking his face for the sake of seeking his face. Hello? And in the process of relationship, there's answers. And if I want to be busy with the acceptable will of God, it's not just getting an answer for a situation. It's having an answer in the context of relationship. That's the acceptable will of God. Are you with me? Are you with me? The perfect will of God. It's that where you, the place where you, your heart and his heart are so absolutely connected. Absolutely connected. That you will go for it if you understand it or not. If you are confused in his will or not, you will honor him. God, I will honor you. That's Moses and God where God says, I'm, I'm going to destroy them. If it's your will, yes, Lord. No, 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 no. The perfect will of God. I know his heart. God, you cannot destroy your people. You cannot destroy your people. The people out there, 
the, the heathen, the people out there will say, God had the capacity to bring them out of Egypt, but he were not able to take them in, into Canaan. For the sake of your fame, for your honor, Lord, you cannot kill your people. That's somebody coming into the perfect will of God. Where is there such a relationship with him that he it's so much about his honor that in everything I do, he needs to be honored. And it, in everything I do, it must be for his name's sake. What we do in the good will of God, yes, I do in the name of Jesus Christ. I do in the name of Jesus Christ. But at the end of the day, when we come into his perfect will, it's not just in the name of Jesus. It's for his name's sake. Not just in his name, but for his name's sake. And it's the place where I'm at peace if I don't understand. All I need to understand at that place is the first point. God is good. God is good. And you know when you need to go into that place and it is his will for you to, to go to that nation. Or it's his will for you to speak up there at your workplace and you are fired. And suddenly there's this financial challenge. But you prayed for God's protection. How does that work? It was the will of God. Why didn't he protect you? And we pray that God will protect us. And then this guy is trusting God, he's serving God full out. And he's being robbed and his wife killed and son chopped up and whatever. But he was a man of God. He trusted God. The other guy who's mocking Christ and using the name of Christ as a swear word, he's just going on. There's just blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Ah, oh, now where's the will of God? How can the word say, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. No, how can I trust for God's protection? How does that work? That guy does not ask God for his protection. He's mocking God. I'm asking God for his protection, and I see a lot of destruction. That guy's giving his life in the nations, and he's burnt. He's been a martyr. Why? How does that work? When I pray, what God challenged me with in the past two weeks, when I pray for protection, and when I ask God these things, what came in my spirit was just, I pray for protection to do his will. God, protect me against my flesh. Protect me against the circumstances that can take me out of your will. Protect me from myself that I will always honor you. doesn't matter if I understand or not. If I'm getting hurt or not, I will still love. I will not close my heart towards that person. No, I say, don't say you, the people must just walk over you and hurt you more and more and more. That's not what I'm saying. And what is his perfect will when I'm praying for protection? God, protect me so that for whatever you have for me on earth, I will be faithful, I will reach my destiny, I will finish the race. I will finish the race as a faithful runner. I will finish the race as a child of God where I will come and I will be standing in front of you and you will say, good and faithful servant. Protect me. Protect me. That I will run the race with endurance in such a way that you will always, always bring honor to your name. Up till the end. Wherever the end will be. That is the essence of protection. And when you pray according to that for his protection, he will never, he will never, he will never not protect you. But he will protect you to do his will. Lead me not into temptation but deliver me from evil. Lead me not into temptation. Oh, is God the one that is tempting you? Whoa. No. But protect me against the temptation of my flesh. Don't let it happen that I go astray. Protect me against my flesh. Protect me against all these ways with temptation. Where the temptation come my way. Deliver me from the evil one. The evil one can be so many times my flesh, the way that I interpret things in my mind. Deliver me, 
set me free from that, Lord. Because when I do my own thing, that's where the enemy comes in. The enemy has no authority over you, except if you, through your flesh, gives him the authority. Through your offense, through what you're going through, through your bitterness, through your unforgiveness, through your opinion about people. When you cannot have the opinion that God has about people, then you're putting yourself in a dangerous place. Make sure that you get God's opinion about people. So that you don't position yourself in a different place than God. Because in that sense you say, God, I'm not agreeing with you. You will not never say that. But if I have a certain opinion about Niku, but it's not God's opinion about Niku. Oh, not, I know. That Niku, you know. <laughs> if I don't have the right opinion about Niku, my problem is I'm, Saying, God, I don't agree with your opinion about Niku. And I'm putting myself in a place where I wonder, where is God's protection over my life? In the, there where I'm standing now. I'm standing with something. I'm standing with some other spirit. And that's the spirit that will bring destruction. And you will not understand. Oh, the, the enemy. You're standing against the enemy. Because he's coming against you. You are just totally deceived. Change your opinion about people. Get into the right place. Get God's opinion. Agree with God's opinion. Not just about people, but into situations. And you will see his protection to do his will. And this honoring the devil that is coming against you when you're trying to do God's will. You will be able to do God's will. Renew your mind. So that you can know that you know this is good before God, but I don't just want to do that what is good. It is good to do this. I giving myself, God expect this of me. But no, it's uh, acceptable. I know what is acceptable before God. I can hear his voice because he's in relationship. So when God says, kill Isaac, your son. I will go and I will do the good thing. I will kill him. But what is acceptable is in my relationship with him, I can hear his voice. When God says, stop, I know that you love me. I will stop. Because I can hear his will in that what is acceptable. And I come into the place of perfection. Not that I am perfect, but his perfection towards me can work. I can hear that what is perfect from him. No, I will not be perfect, man. We will always make mistakes. But I can have perfect harmony with God in the sense that I can hear his voice accurately. Accurately, accurately. You can know that you know that you know this is the will of God. Amen. I want to nearly do a landing. Think accurately about yourself. Verse 3. Point number 4. Think accurately, but it's verse 3. Think accurately about yourself. He says, I charge you, I challenge you not to think more of yourself. That you are better than somebody else. To find your position in Christ. To find your position in the body of Christ. You need to think what God is thinking about yourself in an accurate way. Because you think of yourself, oh, I'm a worm. I'm not worthy in the sense of, I am nothing. I am nothing. That's the way you think about yourself. You're going to be jealous of people. You're going to feel threatened in the presence of somebody that has success. If you see yourself as a failure, somebody with success will irritate you. You'll find always something wrong with a person that has success. Are you with me? I said this morning, even like we have different churches. Now everybody, there's so many people that can have an issue with that church. Because they are dead. Oh, they are the traditional churches. And you're cursing them from hell. And your words are an instrument from hell. They don't need that. You can bless them. Where they are genuine, in certain facets, genuinely wrong. But there's so many people in that church that go there because... God, I need you. God, I want you. God, please, in your mercy, meet up with them. Are you with me? I said this morning, even at CRC, we can say, yeah, many people are led to the Lord and they are left as babies to die. You know, 
We can find a lot of mistakes. But you cannot stand and judge. Who gave you the right to judge? And speak a lot of curses over different churches. There's certain anointings. There's certain giftings. Let us honor it in one another. Amen. About how you see others and about the gifts given by grace. Jealousy. Jealousy is one of the biggest things. When you see where God uses somebody in a certain way, you see that success. You see the gifts flowing through them. You see the gifts flowing through them. And you are excited about how God is using them. Or you are jealous about it. May the Holy Spirit show you how to live. And that your commitment towards God will be pure, will be accurate. Amen? Are you with me? Romans 12, verse, from verse 9 onwards up to verse 20 even. Evaluate your life practically. Ah, oh, please, can you go in this season, even in this, later in December, when you have time with Him? Going into next year, say, God, help me to see what you see. I can say, God, my, you see my heart. That's sometimes the problem. The one that sees many times the least is you yourself. How you can justify your heart. This is my heart in this. That is my heart in this. If your heart, if you have a good heart attitude, then you'll always be teachable to change certain things in your life. Amen. You are with me. Be open. Be open. Be open. If you honor him and your heart is good with him, you will be always teachable. In your love, let it be pure. Your repentance from the heart. Repentance not because you are caught out. Your heart's desire, the honor that comes from a place of humility. There's not, not such a thing of honor without humility. The devil honors Christ in the fact that he can recognize the authority. You can honor by recognizing authority. That sergeant can honor the presence of the colonel. Colonel is your what? Colonel. 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 And say, and honor the presence of authority. But there's nothing in the heart that it will come from a place of relationship. Nothing. But the honor that God expects from you and me is where it comes from a place of humility, where is worship unto Him. I wow about your authority. I wow about who you are. The, the respect in me is, is being, I'm captured by your authority. I'm captured by your final say. I'm captured by the fact that you are the, the name above all names. I'm in that place that where I want to brag about your authority. Amen? Prayer. That's honor. How I serve. Not as a curse. You're a servant of the Lord. You can serve as, because it's an honor or you can serve because it's a curse. We are all servants. No, I'm not a servant. Yes, you are a servant of the Lord. But you decide who you will serve. Prayer, unity, humility, forgiveness, generous, to be generous in your giving. Victory, having victory, but it's in Christ. Not having victory because you, you've won an argument. Somebody can be wrong, you can be right, and at the end of the day, you know the saying. You have won the argument that you are right, but you've lost the relationship. May God help us to understand what that means. To be generous even... I used the example this morning. You know when you are generous, these guys walking on the street, these guys asking you money, many times people say, no, I cannot give that guy because he's going to mess it up. You know, that guy is asking because he's too lazy to work. That guy is like this. And we can decide as judge who we will give to and who not. That's not according to what the word is saying. But you need to hear from God. That you will not sow the seed here on the road. Yes, that's true. Three guys coming towards me, once in a, when doing evangelism, and you can see they're going to ask me something. And God said to me, give that certain amount of 
of money, give it to the guy in the middle. As they approached me, oh, da, 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 speaking a lot of things, and especially this one guy, he's like this, you know, he's having all the right words. And the other guy with him, and this guy in the middle, he's just like, he's just with them. He's just there. And when they were finished, I said, God said to me, I must give that, this man this and this and this. I believe you will deal with it in the right way. They were like, I mean, they, they did the main thing, you know, how to, to get the money. But I said, this is what God said. You hear from the Lord God trust you that you will not mess up with this, what has been given to you. My brother, my sister, God will challenge you to give. Don't be intimate with your justification why you will not give certain things. Be generous in the way that God wants you to be generous. Amen. Have an open hand so that this thing, what you have in your hand, the gift in your hand will not become poison and a curse. The blessing in your hand, you better know what God wants you to do with it. Yes, for you to enjoy and you put it here with your life. But you must know. And then you must put it here. But if you keep it, because you, there's a covetousness in your life, it's going to become poison. It's going to become a curse in your life. But God will release. God would want you to release certain things so that your hand is giving like His hand is giving. That your hand is doing what His hand is doing. But if your hand is doing something else, what you have in your hand will be the curse working against you. Even though if originally it was given by God. God, come and set us free in Jesus' name. That's our prayer. Amen? Last point, verse 21. Do not, over, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All the good stuff that I do now is not in performance. There's the evil one, the evil one, Satan himself, the evil one, demonic spirits. How will I overcome the evil one, these demonic spirits? By the one that is good. God is good. God is good. See what is good and decide, I don't understand what he's doing, but he's good. He's not just faithful because I got certain breakthroughs. Oh, I just want to testify God is faithful because, because. I prayed and he gave me this. No, God is faithful if he gave you it or not. God is good if you see that or not. God is good. Let's say that God, my God is good. And if you stand with that revelation, you will overcome the evil one. But evil will have a spirit in it. And when you see the evil and you do the evil, the demonic, you will draw the demonic to you. When you do that, what is good, more and more the word will become alive in you. Amen. Oh God, we thank you for the weather. We thank you for the rain. But God, even through the thunder, let everything in us that's not from you be destroyed in Jesus' name. Help us to change, not just change our opinions, Lord. Not to change our opinions, but God, we want to think the way you think. We want, don't want to give ourselves because religion expects, because you expect it of us. No, we want to give ourselves because we take the challenge in the fact that you believe we will be able to give ourselves in an accurate way. God, even as we will have communion now, we thank you that you gave yourself in a very accurate way. And we can only do it through the blood of Christ and through how you gave yourself, Lord. God, we want to walk in the mind of Christ. We want to think what you are thinking. We want to feel what you are feeling. We want to go with the purposes that you have for our lives that you have for nations, that you have for cities, for what you have for situations. But God, we desire that as we 
as we embrace your word, as we embrace your thinking patterns, your thought patterns, Lord, all described in your word. We embrace that. We make that commitment to get into that so that we can start to articulate what you are saying. Help us in that, as, that we will love your word. We will love it when you are speaking. We are captivated by the words from your mouth. Let it be so, Lord, so that when we do your will, it will be acceptable from a place of relationship. Set us through, free through the blood of Christ. So we pray.